Hello, friends and neighbors, and welcome to episode 45 of Ray and Benny Talk Sports, the Mike Sellers edition. Remember that dude? <laughs> I remember that, that dude. How can I forget that dude? Oh, man. He was a big guy, awesome fullback. Yeah. <sighs> Him and Charles Roberts together. What a tandem. Lightning. I remember that time. Oh. We were playing Saskatchewan. I don't know if it was a banjo bowl, but Mike Sellers carried a few guys without his helmet on for a good chunk of yards, and then he got tackled, and he was smiling at the camera like he didn't give it a Yeah, was it, wasn't it? Was that a Labor Day game or no? Oh, then it must have been banjo, because I think it wasn't Winnipeg St- or Canada. Oh, okay. Stadium. All right. Uh, yeah, I remember that too, so, yeah. A beast. A beast. Uh <sighs> Friends and neighbors, don't forget to smash that subscribe button. It helps really get the word out. Uh, Leave a like, leave a comment. It helps grow the channel. Benny, where can they find us on social media, brother? You can find us at Ray Benny Sports. We are on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. And thanks to everyone who entered our contest. And congrats to our our winner. Looks like uh, he had a wicked time at the game. He broke his cowbell. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. He broke his... (laughs) Cowbell, Mr. Legacy, thank you for, for entering. Yeah. yeah, you're right. Thank you, everyone, for joining. We can't wait to uh, do another ticket giveaway coming up, so stay tuned. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got to talk. Oh, we got words to say about Hockey Canada. We got to talk about Pierre-Luc Dubois wanting out of Winnipeg and his agent pushing that. We got some Kachuk talk. We got some NFL talk with your boy, Jimmy G. But let's start off Jimmy. with CFL and the power rankings. Let's go from bottom to the top. Who do you got at nine, my friend? Do we have a consensus nine here? Are we, we putting the Red Blacks at nine? Yeah, we have a consensus yeah, yeah. lots. Red Blacks for sure at the bottom, bro. I agree with you. Yeah, no question. Man, like, <laughs> Unreal, man, how that how that team finds ways to lose games in the end. Um, again, their turnover, they won the turnover oh. battle again. Their turnover ratio has got to be wicked this season, and they're 0-5. Yeah. You know? It's, uh, they have a you win the turnover offense. battle, you win the game. Yeah. Caleb Evans looks all right, but uh, I don't think he'll be all right for for this week and moving forward. Uh, poor poor Paul Lapolis. Poor Paul Lapolis. Lapo's got to figure out that offense. It's got to get it going and be consistent, man. It, it's it's sputtering at times too. I get it. You lost your starting quarterback in Mazzoli, but even That's with right. Mazzoli for the last couple of games, it wasn't moving very well. So and the O line is not performing. They got two pieces to make that O line better, and they're not doing any better. No. Yeah, William Powell had a terrible game. 2.2 uh, yards per carry. So trash. you're not going to do uh, very well when your O-line uh, can't open some holes and Powell can't break any runs. No, no, no. I got Montreal and your boy Danny Machocha at eight. <laughs> <laughs> I don't got much to say about them. I don't got much to say Me about too. Them. I, got, I got him at eight. And I don't know. Terrible job by Machocha. Fire that Kahari is- for his discipline issues for the team. And then you went. And you got 13 penalties, 197 yards. 90 well plus done. yards. What a clown. <laughs> Matt Jocha. Oh, my goodness. Uh, who do you got? Okay. Number, yeah, no doubt. No, number, number seven, who do you got? Well, we're going to go with the team that beat the Red Blacks and go with the Thai Cats. Yeah, what a shell of a for team me. from last year. What a shell of a team for the past two great cup appearances. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's amazing to me, and yeah, they scored late to win that game against Ottawa. And you, you think this might have been the game that they caught and you know, rolled it all together and got it going, but barely scraping by, man. I, I'm not seeing good things out of this team so far. Yeah, I hope Kahari uh, can help them out. He was just brought in as a uh, front office kind of assistant, uh, in lack of better terms, a football ops kind of consultant. Uh, probably better defines it. So we'll see. When does he when does he take over as head coach? Uh, probably next year. <laughs> he's gonna get a job somewhere know, as a head coach or OC. We know he's gonna get a job somewhere next year. He could take over Hamilton at some point too. You never know. I don't know if they're gonna start on Steinauer that quickly. I mean, this is, you know, they still got to fight. They're only one game out, so a lot of season to go. Who do you got next? At six, <sighs> your your favorite team, the Edmonton Elks. Considering you the picked win. them every week to win. <laughs> pulled out the win this week. The past two weeks I've picked Edmonton and they pulled out the win. I told you. No, 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 no. What do you mean? They got smashed by Calgary the one week you picked up the win. No, that's what I'm saying. I only picked them the past two weeks and you're telling me I've oh, okay. all season. Don't lie to the people. Don't lie to the people. <laughs> I thought Conflating you said they won the last two weeks when you picked them. Stuff? No, 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 no. Uh, yeah, good for them for winning. <laughs> Yeah, well, like we said, uh, Montreal choked a lot with uh, all those penalties. Uh, helped yeah. Edmonton get back in the game. Cornelius looked all right. 
You look about- um, and they managed to make that second half comeback and steal that game from the uh, from the Owls, which I'm I'm sure most of the league probably wanted to see because they wanted to to see Machocha lose after firing Kahari. <laughs> I was laughing. I was laughing. <laughs> uh, who do you got at number five? I got the Rough Riders. This is where I think we differ, right? I got uh, Toronto. Okay. Even though they beat Saskatchewan, they're still only two and two. Saskatchewan now four and two, so. Can't, can't bump uh, Toronto up on my end that quickly yet. Uh, I, I can bump them no problem because they just beat Saskatchewan. <laughs> uh, and I can't believe what's happening this week with the game uh, that's going to be postponed. But we're going to talk about that in a second. Uh, I'm just taking Toronto because they look a little more solid. Look, It kind of looks like things are starting to splinter in Ryder Nation, in that front office, in that locker room. Uh, so I, I think that display and what's been going on in Saskatchewan since the Marino thing, that's why I had no issue dropping them down to five and having Toronto at four. Um, yeah, mine's flipped. Uh, five for Toronto, four for Saskatchewan. Um, yeah, I do agree with you on Saskatchewan. They're, where is the discipline on that team? Craig Dickinson is losing control. Yep. Uh, his comments on top of it aren't helping. The Duke-Williams yep. stuff, which we'll, we'll talk about in a bit as well, uh, he doesn't think he was going to get suspended. Like, how do you not think that's going to happen? So I'm not we're not sure where his head is, but yeah, they they they're, they may get away this week if a game has to get canceled because Fajardo's injured. Uh, so postponing that game may may be in their benefit, but but leaving it up to Fajardo if he should play or not too is kind of another weird move for me. Uh, yeah, sorry. If, if, if the guy's injured, man, you got to take that guy. joke. It's turning into a joke. Yeah, that organization. Yeah. Uh, I think we have three, two, one, all the same. I got BC, Calgary, Winnipeg in that order. Uh, yeah, same thing, man. Same thing. BC got a nice little bump up for me, even though they had the bye week. Mm-hmm. You know, Calgary, Winnipeg battled it out for that top spot. Winnipeg hung on to it. That was a good game. That was a good yeah. game. That crowd was loud. Almost thirty thousand people at Canet. Um, Investors Group Field. <laughs> Not this one behind me. The one behind you. <laughs> Can evidence. I still uh, that's what happens when you talk about Mike Sellers. But yeah, three, two, one, BC, Calgary, Winnipeg staying on top. Uh, who's gonna shake Winnipeg off top? Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's gonna be for a bit. But that game against Calgary was a great game. It was, it was close. It was tight. It was back and forth. The last play of the game, well, besides the kneel downs, was crazy. Yeah, where Jordan had that ball uh, it bounced out, and Houston, Houston that, on that just shows you don't don't quit on a play, man. For a guy that he had a couple of chances to get interceptions earlier in the game and just missed them, and then he goes and snags that one out of the air. That was that was a crazy finish. Yeah, that that culture or that part of the culture is definitely ingrained in Winnipeg, uh, from Big Hill yeah. to Jefferson. Just go after the Paul until you hear the whistle, and it benefits yeah. you hugely, especially in a play. Like oh, it did. Uh, it did big time. That was an athletic play. Yeah, yeah. If you have any issues with our power rankings, please leave a comment. Tell us what you think. Leave your rankings in the comment section. Let's go to week seven action. Let's look at the game tomorrow. Is it tomorrow? Tomorrow's Thursday. Goodness gracious. Yeah, tomorrow. Al's uh, Red Blacks. Yes. It's a doubleheader? Yes, it is. Six and nine central time. That rhymed. Al Wets and Red Blacks. Which is crazy for a Thursday. Good old CFL schedule. Doubleheader on a Thursday. Don't even get me started on these fools and the schedule. Because the schedule is going to be even more messed because of this uh, la- end it. of the week game. It's supposed to happen on Saturday. That's probably not going to happen. But let's focus yeah. on this first game that starts at 6 central time. Al's Red Blacks. I'm going to take Montreal on this one. Woo! Oh, for sure. Not taking your boy Lapo. Not get him. No. Can't beat Machocha. No, there's no reason. <laughs> I'm gonna, I, yeah, even though I don't want to cheer for your boy Machocha. Uh, I'm going to take Montreal. You know, it's great what you saw from Caleb Evans. Uh, and you'd like to think that success would turn into a, uh, a win this week. But I think maybe having Trevor Harris and not turning the ball over will help Montreal win in this one. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna take Ottawa on, on that. And just they're at home. Um, they've been close. I feel like this is the week they're going to get through. And the Owls team mm-hmm. is dysfunctional enough to maybe help the Red Blacks get that first victory of the season. But I need to see more from Lapo and some consistent play calling, a better offense. The D is playing pretty well in Ottawa, obviously. You know, so the, the Benavides is doing fine there. That yeah. offense has got to now chip in more as well. So yeah, I think they're, they're going like, to be able to break through this week. That, that Ottawa defense is allowing 10.5 yards per completion. That's a first down per completion. That's not good. And well, sorry, allowing... turno- turnover-wise, they're helping the Ottawa offense out quite a bit. 
But and uh, they allow 15 more yards rushing a game than Montreal. That's horrible too. Uh, so, and the quarterback situation with Arbuckle coming in, probably taking some snaps. Who knows how that practice week went? Trying to incorporate a new quarterback. Uh, I just think things are a little shaky in Ottawa for them, even to win at home. So I'm going to take Montreal. 13 for 197 penalties. Montreal yeah. is going to help Ottawa out probably. I'm sure we'll see, we'll see if this. Uh, we'll see if this uh, firing of Kahari is a little bit more into the players and not going to be working hard for Machocha or anything like that. We'll see how this see. this turns out this week. But that last week almost shows me that hey, they wanted to prove that you know you're firing Kahari for a stupid reason kind of thing. But we'll see. Yeah, yeah that that could be a, a, a case. But I find it hard to believe that a whole bunch of players are just going to do stupid things to say, hey, you shouldn't have fired our coach. They still got jobs to do. They still got games to win. They still have pride in their own game. Uh, yeah. I just think it's you know a new shuffle and things got out of hand and they. <laughs> You know, they just took some stupid... That's really out of hand. When they, when they shouldn't have, you know. So, we'll see. And I'm sure they, like, focused on that on game tape all week, uh, if anything else. Uh, let's look at the later game. The game of Cats. The tie Cats and the Lions. Who do you yeah, out in BC. <laughs> Who do, I'm, t- I'm taking ask? BC in this one. Yeah. What? BC for me. What? You crazy. You crazy. I'm crazy for taking BC. What? I just played. Yeah, I'm taking BC too. I think they're going to trounce Hamilton. Yeah. I, I, and after the bye week for BC, Hamilton's traveling out west. Dane Evans still, yeah, no interceptions last game, but he still had a critical fumble late in that game as well. Yeah. <laughs> that led to another uh, touchdown. So I'm excited to see Rourke again out there and see what he can do. Yeah, they're rested. They're ready to play. They have watched Hamilton play, and they're probably a little mad that they got their undefeated streak broken so convincingly at home. Yeah, and uh, then you got to go on a bye week after that. I'm sure they're a champion to get back out oh, there the week after. But poor Hamilton, <laughs> poor Orlando Steinauer, poor was their offensive coordinator Tommy Condell or whatever. Oh, poor, poor. Yeah, them. they're in trouble. Yeah, it could get ugly in this one. Uh, I agree on that one. Let's look at this Bombers Elks matchup. Uh, Bombers are going to destroy this team. I think. I don't. I don't know how really much more analysis I can give you there. Uh, I mean, no. got a win. They got by, but this is a Bomber team that looks like they're getting better every week and finding new weapons every week. Yeah, the the one thing that does scare me about this is. You know, maybe maybe it's a bit of a letdown game after their two big wins in the last couple ga- uh, weeks against BC Calgary. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the Bombers do end up playing down a little bit to their opposition. You know, they brought it against BC. They brought it against Calgary. Hopefully, they can bring it again. You know, that was three wins through, so three games in 12 days. That's a lot of football in the last little bit. So hopefully, they'll still be re- raring to go on this one. You know, no really injuries. There's minor injuries here and there, so no big injuries. Um, but yeah, Burrell Walker's out for Edmonton, That's so I definitely see Edmonton. Winnipeg taking this game. No, Kenny Lawler gets his return. So far, so far the ex Bombers have played pretty well against the Bombers in in their games. Darvin Adams, um, Andrew Harris, yeah. you know, those offensive guys have proven. Hey, you guys should have kept us. So I expect big things from Lawler tomorrow, and hopefully the Bombers DBs, you know, which are getting killed on the long ball, can stop that. Yeah, they also yeah they've led a lot of crazy long balls. They're also they also know the little intricacies of the players that they're playing against and the system that they're playing against. So they know the zone yeah. that they can lay in and they know that that wide side sideline is open almost all day, every day. The bombers will let you have that. <laughs> it's true. It's a, it's a hard throw yeah. to make and it's a far throw to make. So go ahead. Try. Yeah. try if you want that open all game, you're not going to get very far. Uh, at least I hope. Uh, yeah. <laughs> let's look at, uh, well, why should we even look at Toronto Saskatchewan? Like, well, I, I I don't think it is postponed just yet, right? I mean, they still have that's so they still have to see to tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. If, if Saskatchewan can practice tomorrow, I think they'll uh, they'll end up playing the game. But if that's canceled tomorrow, which probably is, when you got ten guys uh, on COVID list, that chances are you're probably not practicing. Yeah, well, I don't think they should postpone probably, the like I said, probably way. good for Saskatchewan. Yeah, probably good for Saskatchewan to probably miss this game. Uh, well, Duke Williams is going to be suspended anyways for the next game, no matter what, as he got the one game suspension there for helmet throwing. So, what a clown! What a clown that guy <laughs> is! Like, this the fact that he got to stay in the game, too. 
Yeah, this team is cracking <laughs> at the seams. Like, you know, there, there were articles talking about, oh, the O'Day Dickinson era. I think Dickinson is going to be gone this year if they don't make the Grey Cup. He's already starting to oh, lose the room. Really? Yeah, if yeah. they don't make the Grey Cup, for sure, it's time yeah. to go. Because this team, he's losing the room. You can see it. Like, his players are doing pure stupidity on the field. And he has no control yeah. over it. And then he's 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 defending them. Oh, Marino yeah. could have said that because he has a black best friend and a black fiance. You know? Oh, Duke Williams won't get suspended. Like he threw a helmet at another player's head. How is that not suspendable? Yeah. Especially that he didn't get kicked out of that game. You yeah. knew for sure then at least he's getting a game for that, which probably should have been more for throwing a helmet at someone's head. But we, Marino also probably should have got more. So absolutely. You know. And yeah, it's going downhill fast for them. Uh like if, and Dickinson. if they want to try and play like well we're the raiders of the cfl that's not going to work yo there are nine teams and the ownership and coaching and management groups are too close to let this garbage slide by just for some kind yeah. of we want to be the bad boys or some marketing garbage like saskatchewan get your ish together yeah you're, so you're pushing it a little bit too far and like i said i don't like the handling of the fajardo injury if the guy's that injured sit him yeah, you know, you got a long season. Sit him. Hey, you want to play, buddy? You know, don't like, let, yeah. don't let the guy. What player is gonna say, "Hey, no, take me out," unless something's exactly. broken completely? You know, exactly. they're they're gonna want to play. Because so you and they, lose your job. Can, that and you know, say, "I have to prove how tough I am too," right? So, Jeez. like, who wants to be the next Drew Bledsoe? Yeah, <laughs> you know exactly. what I mean. Exactly. Uh, yeah, that's true. So let's tough. touch. Let's touch on the game a little, since it probably could happen. Uh, I'm thinking Saskatchewan in this one. Because historically, Saskatchewan has been pretty good at making week-to-week -week adjustments. Uh, they're not very good at in-game adjustments, to be honest with you. They're not very good at that at all. But yeah. on a week-to-week -week basis, I think they're strong. They're at home. Uh, Toronto, I think, is a very good squad, even though I have them higher in the power rankings. But uh, I think in this matchup, Saskatchewan would sweep by. Yeah, I'm probably going to agree with you on that. Saskatchewan at home, they always play better at home. It was a close game last time on the road. Same reasons, you know, Saskatchewan's going to come out on top a little bit. Uh, they'll have that fire from the uh, home crowd in them. Mm -hmm. It depends. Oh, yeah, Fajardo's out. Uh, who is their backup, actually? I can't remember now. Can't Probably remember no one that we know. Oh. <laughs> if Fajardo plays, then they got a chance. If he doesn't, I could see Toronto taking that game from them. But I'm going to go with Saskatchewan right now, knowing what we know. You see Saskatchewan's new logo that they've trademarked? Uh, you know what? I saw it quickly. Uh, how did it look? It looks like the Red Blacks. It's a big S. Oh, that's with, right. Yes. It does. It's a big S with the wheel yes. inside it, and it's round, and it says Saskatchewan Rough Riders around it. But, like, yeah. the Rough Riders, out of spite, should be like, you know what? I don't like your logo because it's too close to ours because Saskatchewan didn't want them to be the Rough Riders. So, <laughs> <laughs> should have loved them. They should just do it out of spite. <laughs> no, I don't like your logo. It's too much like ours. Try again. Yeah. Uh, or we're changing our name. To the rough ride exactly it's a pretty poor little logo though yuck uh let's move on to the laughable hockey canada <laughs> what a joke this is an investigation being reopened uh you can go first on on hockey canada my friend for me on this thing like the fact that they had a fund even pay out uh, sexual abuse uh cases or investigations is ridiculous to me like yeah. you so you knew how long this stuff's been going on for us and instead of trying to put an end to it and stopping it and helping people out um you made a fund instead mm -hmm. this organization needs to be cleaned out from top to bottom cleaned yeah. out new faces fresh voices in there uh, and start rebuilding this thing from the bottom up because it's it's rotten big yeah. time how aren't there, how aren't there uh, like, after this investigation, there's got to be some heads roll, or there's got to be people resigning. Yeah. Out of embarrassment. Resigning, charges if there needs to be. Yes. You know, the whole nine yards, really. And my so. major issue, like I had last time, is the funding of this organization. We, as taxpayers, do not need to be giving Hockey Canada a cent of money. Uh, when it comes right. down to it, Hockey Canada... Um, relies relies on six percent of its annual budget from the government so that's about 7.8 million dollars this is an organization that's sitting on cash and assets that total 153 million dollars 
They have enough to cover that shortage, that 6% shortage for the next 40 years and still make money upon yeah. money. So really, this organization should be getting zero tax dollars for a long, long time. Yeah, yeah. I agree with that for sure, man. Because when it comes down to it, that fund is being made up of our tax dollars. Yeah. We're paying out people to hush on sexual assault and protecting these players when it comes down to it. Yeah, it's disgusting. And and the releasing, wow, well, the releasing of names, I know it's part of uh, still an investigation going on. There's a lot of players that have come out from that 2018 team said they had yeah. no involvement in it. And there is still some that hasn't said anything yet. So it almost, it's telling, I guess, uh, that you would think the ones that are silent right now are the ones that actually are involved, right? Yeah, well, exactly. the investigation will play out and we'll find out for sure because you know, there could be some other players that, hey, say I didn't do this and then found out to be doing it. But mm -hmm. let the investigation play out. These guys need to be held accountable for it. And so does Hockey Canada. It's closing in on them. I think about yeah. my number could be very wrong, but 14 out of the 22 might have come forward and denied it already. So yeah, that eight. there wasn't much left. Yeah. And how many are involved? Eight. Uh, and they were all CHL players. So, you know, yeah. guys like Makar who went south to play in college, they're not involved. So it's really closing in on them. And uh, I hope they get screwed. I hope they get screwed. I never want oh, to they lose should. their job. But when you do something like that to another person, I could care less. There is no excuse. No, no, nothing. It doesn't matter what you are or what you became in life, man. You got to pay for that. So Yeah, you're a trash person. For sure. Yep. Big uh, time. <laughs> this person's really inching up on my trash person list. Uh, Pierre-Luc <laughs> Dubois. This guy and his agent pushing for a trade to Montreal. Of course, I'm a little pissed at the Jets for not making that draft day trade. Uh, at this point, they really can't be picky of what they get. They kind of got to take what they get at this point. Well, they can. Um, or they can hang on to, to Dubois and see what he can do. And maybe the offers will get better as things go along. No, but, no, bro. Look but you can't, just take, Columbus, you, can't just, you can't just take anything at this point. Yeah, but he ended up getting line A for Columbus, right? Yeah, but the we, thing is, we, the guy will not play if he doesn't want to be there. He'll lap up and down the ice. Like I don't, I don't. What, what are, what are the offers coming out of Montreal? Dvorak, Anderson. Like I, I don't know. You need at least Suzuki somewhere coming back, man, for sure. Um, exactly though. But they're, in, they're not in a position to make that, to get that. No, nah, like I mean it, right now, especially with their agents saying they only want to go to Montreal. That takes thirty teams out of the conversation. Yeah. Like, I don't see this situation getting any better for the Winnipeg <laughs> Jets, bro. You know what? There was a lot of issues with Kane and then Truba wanting to go to certain places. Those, those deals worked out, so hopefully Chevy can find something, some kind of middle going, uh, ground here and get something decent. Yeah. But I, I'm not going to hold my breath that he is. Actually, it's a terrible situation that PLD's put this team in. And maybe, maybe you know what? He's the problem, you know? And, and coming from Columbus, he was the problem, not Tortorella. Absolutely. You know? Like... What kind of player it's, gives up on them? Their, their team. Oh. Yeah, we'll see what happens if he gets any kind of deal signed over this uh, arbitration or a one-year deal. Yeah. I saw somewhere where someone suggested Montreal should just sign him um, to an offer sheet, like a two-year, $4 million deal or something like that, just for him to become a free agent in two years anyways, right? No yeah. matter what his contract was, but it's not going to end up well probably. <laughs> I think the old, the best case scenario at this point is that Montreal foolishly puts out a high tender and the Jets get one, two, three draft picks. First round, second round, third round yeah. draft picks. That's almost like the best scenario, which kind of sucks. Yeah, and uh, if that scenario happens, you almost want them to tear it down completely, right? Exactly. Losing exactly. PLD, you got nothing behind Shifley. What do you got, Lowry? And you, you don't even have Stasny anymore. For Petty, I don't know if he's ready there for center center role, so it's going to be a rough season. Got to move Wheeler. Got to get that off the books. It doesn't uh, seem like that's happening because they don't want to retain any cash. So stupid. This team. And that's Chipman's decision? Get out of here, man. Can that probably, guy get his hands out of the kitchen? Chipman's probably got a decision. But he's got a choice in all these decisions. That's why he kept Chevy. I'm going to call this guy Snyder soon, man. Or should I call him Ross? I don't know. It's not Ross Snyder. Ross, I'm gonna call Ross. It's not Mark Chipman anymore. It's Ross Snyder. So all y'all know who I'm talking about. 
Don't compare him to Snyder. Snyder is a terrible person. At least Chipman's not that bad. That's true. There is that. that's how, that that's how the yeah. frustration is sometimes. I forgot about yeah. that stuff. I'm just talking about the meddling. Uh, into, maybe Davis. Maybe Davis. Oh, goodness. Yeah, yeah. Davis Ross. There you go. <laughs> Let's talk about uh, the Kachuk and Calgary that wants to go. Uh, more, more tough situations in small town Canada. Yeah. <sighs> Now I wanted to sign a long-term deal, Matthew Kachuk in Calgary. Uh, what, what, what's going to happen? What do you think with these small market Canadian teams? Are we going to be able to battle in the long term of, of, of the NHL, or are we just going to have guys come in while we, you know, for first few years and then want out of here when they're ready? You have to draft and develop. And but that's what this guy is. Kachuk's a draft and develop, and he still wants out of there. But you got to find a way to win in that window. That's like almost every other league now, except for the NBA. Uh, like the NFL, it's draft and develop when it comes down to it, unless you're the Rams. Because, uh, yeah. like, we're the market, like Carolina, we cannot compete uh, for large named free agents when the time comes. We can't do it. So it has to be done through the draft. I, I can't see any other but way. You got to, you got to, so you got to hit those picks and yeah. they got to be good quick. Yeah. And then because by the time they're 27 or whatever it is after seven or eight years of, of playing, they can they can get the get the heck out of here, right? Yeah. But you have to have enough veterans as well that have stuck around long enough uh, to help those young guys get to that point. But you know, and you hope those older guys would be able to convince the younger guys. Look at Calgary; they just had a winning season and a pretty good season. Yeah. You know, now they lost Goudreau, Goudreau. and they're going to lose Kachuk too. So. Yeah, that's that's the thing. You, it, it is draft and develop with these markets. There's no other way around it. Like, would, it would Edmonton would probably be in the same position if they didn't have McDavid? Guys probably would not want to go there or whatever either. Yeah, you know, at some point they'd be wanting out too. You know, so and they're they're a little bit different because they're they're a, they're not quite a small market team, and also they don't have provincial tax, uh, so that plays a huge part. Like in Florida, they don't have state tax, and that's why a lot of and that, that was another actual issue with small market versus other markets. Should there be some kind of equalization that doesn't make those other destinations without tax more attractive? Uh, <laughs> So I don't know the solution other than draft and develop, my friend. No, but I think it's still going to be the same situation. Guys are going to want to go bigger markets. You get more sponsors, sponsorships out in those bigger markets. Uh, yeah. You make more money that way, right? You got lack of privacy in a lot of these cities. Um, and media is kind of crazy sometimes on on some of these guys and just poking and, and prodding them all the time. So it's like, why not go somewhere else where you're not going to be questioned? Hey, why did you have a bad game? You know, one game in nine games, you played a bad one. Why is that one so bad tonight? You know, yeah. like all the little things add up, right? So hopefully we're not headed that way. And hopefully, you know, you'll get guys like Ehlers, Connor, who signed long-term deals in Winnipeg, Shifley and Wheeler, who stuck around for a long time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's going to be bad apples or bad guys that want to get out of here along the way. So hopefully they can build a good enough team to compete and have guys stick around. Yeah, they're going to have to find a, uh, a culture of drafting where they – draft a type of guy uh Ehlers is great because he comes from a smaller nation he comes from a smaller city slash community so he gets it you know it's, that's a huge reason why Temu loved it here he got it he was from Finland uh of course he got moved not because he was saying he wanted to but no it seems like the Jets are gonna have to draft that type of guy who is almost NHL ready but that, that's where Line I thought was too a small from a smaller country smaller town you know Winnipeg's perfect for him but you know for every Ehlers you're gonna have a line a that's gonna say hey no I want bigger and better and brighter right there's always rumors of him wanting to go to Los Angeles I don't think his final stop is gonna be Columbus by any means so no, but there's also the issue of Wheeler and Shifley with Liney too it wasn't yeah, all about him wanting to that, get out of Winnipeg that's true that that locker room was trash which doesn't help keep young guys there that's no. why we're seeing a lot of young guys want to get the f out uh and it could very well be Shifley and Wheeler goodness gracious we're so positive on Jets Nation this off season. Woo! Stay off the Twitter, bro. Dude, you picked the you picked the Jets to win the Stanley Cup last year, so that was pretty positive. I did. I was like, okay, here's the exactly. Year. They so. got the defensive talent, and they're gonna make the push, and that was a disaster. Exactly, exactly. And everyone said it was such a disappointing season. Yeah. It's too hyped up. We all hyped them up. Yeah, yeah. They can deliver. Let's talk about uh, your boy, Jimmy G. 
and his team and his agents getting permission to seek a trade. Uh, he's been able to seek a trade since March. This is no different. But then he went and got surgery. Uh, so obviously that complicated things and everyone's waiting for the shoulder to heal so he can start throwing again. So I guess he's getting closer to that. And that's why they announced it again, yeah. that he can go seek a trade. But who's going to trade for him? You know, maybe the you'll Browns. Get a, you'll get a sixth rounder for from Seattle, maybe. That, that's the thing. Do you want to trade him to Seattle? Do you want it? Like, I heard rumors of New Orleans wanting him when they weren't sure about Winston before. You know, he'll make that team better. It's a good situation. If the team is decent enough, he'll probably be decent enough to help a team, right? If he's going to a crappy team, he's in trouble. You know? Yeah. And it so, depends what his contract's going to be at. Is it still going to be at 20 or so million? Well, unless he's going to renegotiate it, it's at 25 mil. Like, I mean, the oh. Niners can... The Niners can drop him tomorrow and they don't pay him anything. But yeah. right now, wherever he's going, unless they redo his contract, it's 25 mil. There's Bye. no team in the NFL right now that needs a $25 million quarterback. But he might, if he finds of, the right team. Of Garoppolo's stature. No. If he finds the right team where he can renegotiate and take less, back up, or compete for a starting job kind of money, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and go in there and win that job, and then maybe that'll lead to another contract next year. But he needs to probably drop his salary as well or get cut completely, and then he'll make even less. You know, I, so. I don't know what San Francisco is expecting to get for this guy, but... Yeah, it's not going to be much at this point. No. It's probably more so just to get, get him the heck out of here at this point, and hopefully you can put him in a place that you want more than, you know, him, sending him to a situation where the team can come back to bite you in the butt, so... Yeah, I, I say Mayfield is slightly better than Garoppolo, and they got a conditional fifth for him. Uh, he also had that eighty or that twenty million dollar contract or whatever. So, and uh, where they may get lucky yeah. is uh, Garoppolo renegotiating, but we'll see. It's not gonna be it's not gonna be much anyways at this point. No, unless unless the starters, the team that has Super Bowl hopes starter goes down. Yeah. Then you can Sam Bradford that deal and get a first rounder, hopefully. <laughs> you ain't gonna get no first rounder for Jimmy. Jimmy that's right. Oh, I'm I'm saying if a team is in desperate need, Sam Bradford got a first rounder. Oh my goodness! Because team was desperate. Was the Vikings? He got traded to the Vikings, right? Sam Bradford, what yeah. a joke! The Vikings. <laughs> he made so much money. I hear their their coach, their former coach, didn't like uh, what's his name at all. Kirk Cousins, uh, Kirk Mike Cousins. Zimmer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That guy is also overrated and overpaid. Give me a break. Uh, we'll get to more NFL talk soon. We should start coming up. We should start training camp starts the, next week. The NFL quarterbacks. Maybe we should start ranking them soon. Jimmy D, number one, right? Wow, you're lying. Let's uh, go yeah. to uh, <laughs> <laughs> shout outs. You got any shout outs, brother? Yeah, I'm going to give mine to uh, Greg Ellingson, who put up uh, an awesome week for the Bombers uh, 11 catches, 152 yards. Um, you know, another fine performance, great signing so far for the Bombers. And, and then I'm going to give one to also Carlton Agadosi for that, those wicked two wow, touchdowns what a target. Uh, that he made look so easy <laughs> when they probably weren't that easy, but man, the, the, the height on that guy was crazy. Yeah. I had his name, I had his name on my list here earlier when we were talking about each week, they're finding a different weapon to use and wow, what yeah. a line coming off that. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I got a couple shout-outs. Special shout-out goes to the Winnipeg Gold Eyes for having an all-local Winnipeg beer lineup. That's important. Yes, indeed. The Bombers and Jets have got to get on that train. I know they can't get more money out of locals from Bud or whatever, but a lot of the beer they sell at the stadium and at Canada Life Center sucks. Bombers Bombers started bringing in some craft beers from local uh, companies this year. Not all everyone local. or whatever, but all at local. least they did something. Yeah, the Jets need to get on that, but they're never going to get there. No, no. No. Also, Not enough money, man. Talking about money, 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 money. Also, shout out to the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and Wade Miller for turning out an impressive operating profit of $2.1 million in a short yeah. season. Break up champs helps. But yeah, that's, that's awesome to hear. That ownership group, or sorry, that leadership group uh, in Winnipeg is, is top notch. Benny, yeah. do you have anything to say to the people? You know what? Uh, thanks a lot for listening. Keep listening. Let us know what you think and uh, have a good week. Yeah, and in the famous words of Leroy, uh, I messed that up already. And in the famous <laughs> words of Leo Du Rocher, baseball is like church. Many attend, few understand. Be kind, be safe, help each other out. 
Hey, friends and neighbors, don't forget to check us out online on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter at Ray Denny Sports. And don't forget to check out our YouTube channel. Leave a like, leave a comment, tell us what you think.